berberine is converted to dihydroberberine. Yes. And what we see is a it's about five times more bioavailable on average. And even further, there's certain people that berberine had limited effect on because I, I think because of their gut microbiota and that they just weren't converting it. So for some people, we're seeing it as high as 30x because they just didn't do a good job of berberine. Uh. Yeah. When you look at ultra processed food and the damage it's doing and the fact we're sedentary and the fact that we're not fasting like we used to and the fact that we're not hormetically stressed like we used to be, mm -hmm. then that's where being on these compounds can be so potent. The problem with berberine is there's bioavailability issues. You have to take higher doses. You have to take it three times a day. There is GI distress for a large part of the population. So what I looked at with dihydroberberine is going to the metabolic uh, downstream metabolite in that pathway that in your gut, berberine is converted to dihydroberberine. Yes. And what we see is a, it's about five times more bioavailable on average. And even further, there's certain people that berberine had limited effect on because I, I think because of their gut microbiota and that they just weren't converting it. So for some people, we're seeing it as high as 30x because they just didn't do a good job of berberine. And so this is one of those cases where that metabolite kind of fixes all the wrongs and it works for pretty much everyone at doses that instead of 500 milligrams, it's 100 to 100, 150 milligrams. And instead of three times a day, it's two times a day. So that's where I think everyone should be taking dihydroberberine 